Terrell Moore. How did you get that name? I'm named after my father, Terrell Moore. You gotta be out of your mind to think, like, you know, you throw paint on a rectangle and expect people to just come out of the wild blue yonder and then, you know, appreciate you and buy your art. But that's what I've been doing for like, 28 years. I remember uh, the, the morning uh, looking on Facebook and on uh, the art news and seeing that Terrell had a, a fire. Within an hour of it happening, I got text messages and voicemails from friends telling me that the, that the gallery was on fire and I was so sad. Mostly I was worried about the dogs, to be honest because you know he's got these two elderly dogs that are very precious to all of us. I was never in any, there was never any doubt that he would, was gonna be fine. You know, that wasn't, it was just, you know, I wonder, you know, I was curious to see what he was gonna do with it. And I'm very, very happy to be part of this particular uh, installation because I love Terrell and I believe in his work and I'm so happy he's back after the fire. Terrell Moore's uh, work has always been very inspiring to me. I see that um, when I look at his work, I feel a lot of emotion. I think he puts a lot of emotion into the work. It's a combination of many different styles, mixed media, colors. Um, he, he doesn't just stop at just something flat. He really works the image, he works the dimensions, he works the texture. Terrell's work is very textural. He tends to paint over and over a lot of his works, so it could start off looking one way and end up looking very different. He uses a myriad of techniques, paint brushes, texturizing things with paper, with adding mixed media, blowing water on it, um, scraping at it with a palette knife. He does a lot of different things to the work to create really wonderful, highly textured abstract paintings. Sometimes it's very controlled, and sometimes it's controlled chaos. When I was a little boy, I would just look at the clouds, and I'd see forms and animals and the clouds. And that inspired me. Not knowing really what any art scene was really about. Although in Dallas, it was just like, you know, it was like going to school for me. Because so I was 18, I opened my own gallery instead of going to art school. It was a small, narrow space, and I had a storefront. And across the street from me actually was the best gallery uh, at the time, probably one of the best galleries in the Southwest. And so every time this guy would do an art show, I would do one. The same night, of course. Just hoping that maybe these people in the, in the Mercedes Benz and the Jaguars will walk across the streets, you know. And they did. Started selling paintings, and I was like, I want to get out of the heat. <laughs> you know, he got to LA by sort of loading up all of his paintings in the back of a truck and driving here, because seemed like a good, you know, that was the thing to do, so he did it. I just saw that there was an opportunity to come out here, and this is where I wanted to be, and, you know. Because when he started just really being independent and on his own like that 20 years ago, people didn't do that. People found galleries. You know, they wanted a home, they wanted that, and he completely made it work, and it was really brilliant, you know, to witness that. That was kind of the beginning. Uh, a lot of artists were just starting to move down here because of the open spaces and the, and the availability. The LA art scene is really multiple art scenes. There's the downtown art scene, which is edgy, has a little bit more street art, a little urban art. The downtown art walk started 10 years ago uh, by a few artists that had some galleries uh, in the area. Um, they wanted to kind of celebrate the arts and they were moving from other areas of the city and this was like a wide open kind of 
palette for them. It brought the attention of urban street art to the masses. That was like a happening scene, like music, art, artists doing art. 50 people to 1,000 people to 3,000. I remember when it hit 10,000 people, and that was considered huge. We have, in those years, hit 35,000 people that have come on the second Thursday of every month. And Terrell's Gallery, which was always at 12th and Hope, was always a go-to destination, a, 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 it was a go-to place. The old gallery on Hope Street was a destination for a lot of people at the Art Walk because Terrell loved to stay open late. People would come after the other galleries closed. So it very much was kind of a happening late night spot where art and music came together in a fun party. Around 5 a.m., I went to bed. I woke up at, the only reason I woke up is because I had an appointment at 2 p.m. May 4th. And walked out of the bathroom and I just heard this whoosh sound. And there was like air and literally the sky was falling. As we pulled up to the building, there was a, a large volume of smoke showing and there was also fire showing uh, from the windows in the alleyway. The entire place filled up with uh, black smoke so fast that I, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. Being that we knew the building, uh, we knew that there was a potential for occupant, uh, occupants to be in there. Knowing that it was the art gallery also, we knew that there would at least be one to two people inside. My primary concern was getting my dogs we took a look down the alley, just real quick to see where the fire was going. And the roof was falling in on us as we were up there cutting. Uh, it's a very hot, intense fire. My dog, Ted, as soon as the door opened, he just bolted down the street. My other dog, Lila, picked her up and took her out. Fire department was already coming. The only thing I did walk out with was a portrait of my mom, my mother. And then I just watched these plumes of smoke and I thought everything was like done. Because of the fire department and their professionalism they uh, managed to save a lot of my stuff. After the fire, Terrell was very depressed, obviously, because it was a traumatic experience, really a life-altering thing that happened. And it, it was just, it, it just was like a sent shockwaves through the community. I lost maybe about a third of my art. And a lot of the other art that was salvaged was just uh, covered in um, black soot. He lost a lot of work, he lost his space. Um, so he had some real issues with the, with the gallery. So, and then here he emerges. I was really proud of how he, you know, sort of came right back from that. Um, he does have a kind of um, unsinkable quality to him. Terrell's kind of a shy individual. He's kind of a loner, which a lot of people don't realize about him, because as a gallery owner, he really does need to be out in the face of people quite often. This is a painting I did in, uh, in Venice. The most important thing is that the person buying the art really resonate with it. They really have to love the piece. Wow, this piece is such a great entry piece for the show. 
with the footprints from the firemen as they were racing to put out the fire. I've done a lot of different things for Terrell over the years. In 2011, I worked as his gallery director and the co-curator of the gallery. I helped him with his work and I also brought in other artists. As a, as a curator, one of my first jobs is always to research the art and then select the art. Once the art's selected, you design the exhibit. So you bring in all the art and then I call it the dance of the paintings because you put them against this wall, then you put them against that wall, then you change it all around. Then you actually do the installation, then the lighting, then the name plates and the price list. And there's so many things to do in putting an art show together that it, it takes a family. Artists such as Terrell are only going to become more important in the art world. Terrell Moore's artwork is, has always been impressive. I remember walking into the gallery for the first time and just being excited by what I saw and just thinking, finally, here's an artist that is actually committed to work. He's not thinking about selling. He's not thinking about where else can I, you know, put my name? When you look at his work, it, it has a lot of grace. It has a lot of charisma. It has a lot of, um, it, it pulls you in. It, it speaks to you. It's powerful. I mean, it's powerful. And, and he takes things and, and turns it into something. I, I just think that that is the, an ultimate art expression. Looks good, Dale. Mike, uh, Mike Paluso here was the fireman that was on the nozzle at that fire. He went through your place and put the fire out. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. I, I just uh, really, I was shocked when I went back into the place. Many of the guys that are here tonight, Terrell, were here the day that place burned. Let go of that unless you're gonna buy me a drink. Ouch! That hurts.
All right. I think this is great attire for, you know, an art art show. <laughs>